The question of the cost to the economy will, one, will be one that we'll continue to ask, but the question that should be severely mentioned and perhaps interrogated a whole lot more is, is load shedding over? Who better to ask than the CEO of ESCOM himself, Mr. Pagamani Khadebe. Baba, thank you so much for the time this afternoon coming through on SABC News. I suppose that will be my first question. Are we done with load shedding, at least for now, and if not, for how long? We have covered a lot of ground, Arabile. Uh, the challenges were severe. Unplanned maintenance was sitting at, at 13,000 sure. uh, out of the total uh, production of electricity, which is sitting at about 45,000. That created a lot of problems. Mm. But since then, unplanned maintenance has decreased uh, to about 10,000 or so. Yeah. That gives us a breather. But the challenge is not that. The challenge is unplanned uh, breakdowns that we are currently experiencing. And accordingly, we have put a lot of money on the side on investment. Mm. We are putting about 49 billion over the next four, over the next four or five years to deal with these issues, so that we stop this unplanned uh, breakdowns yeah. that we've been experiencing. Is the age of the plant still the factor with regards to those unplanned uh, breakdowns? It is. We are looking at the average age of 37, uh, 37 years, but that's not all. In the past eight nine years, the maintenance has dep- uh, depreciated or decreased by about 45 percent or so. But over and above that, we have exhausted them, using them at about 85%. So that Mm. in itself has contributed immensely in this challenge. And in fact, the problems that we're experiencing now will have been experienced about two years back if National Treasury did not, when they recapitalized ESCOM, demanded that ESCOM at least spend about $27 billion on maintenance. That has decreased, you know. About five, six years back, ESCOM was, was spending about 30, 32 billion on maintenance. That has come down to 20 percent, 20 billion, in the midst of these 37 year old power stations. Sure, sure. But it, that's not just the old power stations. Then you have a problem with the new power stations. Yeah. That are, uh, that Why are is there a problem with the new power stations? Should, th- should those not be uh, sufficient, efficient enough to be running in themselves? Is it a matter that we, we perhaps you know, contracted the wrong kind of people? Is the machinery just not compatible with you know, certain elements with which we, we, we use, etc.? Why is it that the newer machinery is the one giving us issues? It's engineering challenges, engineering problems, and South Africans should know about that. We have spent about 250 billion out of two of them, Kusili and uh, Metupi, and we are only getting about 2,000 megawatts. In fact, uh, the one commercial uh, unit at uh, Kusili slips from time to time, yeah. almost every day, and at Metupi, at least now, all three are operating. Mm. But there are no guarantees. So what we've decided to do is once again to call the SWAT team and put a lot of money on the side, about $9 sure. billion, to try and deal with these issues. So, so who's you to have blame? What, who's to blame is... For the engineering issues, I mean. Because if we're going to have those engineering uh, issues, as you say, we've spent so much money on it, mm. why then, if it still happens, who do we blame then? Who do we look to for answers? Those that were involved at the beginning that brought the companies in here. Yeah. And unfortunately, it seems as if we land along the way. It's like traveling, uh, fl- uh, taking a flight and fixing it on air. Yeah. That was a challenge. But we ourselves, you know, as being part of the ESCOM for the past 12 months or so, yeah, yeah we can say maybe when we started we should have prioritized uh, the issue of maintenance. But at that time, we were one, two months or so, and the budget the previous year was $20 billion. If we know now what we, what we, if we knew then what we know now, yeah. maybe we should have prioritized it. But at that moment in time, there was no money available at all. So no one wanted here, to lend the money. Where to from here with regards to those, the maintenance, all those issues? We have $49 billion that will be wor- that will be spent on maintenance. Yeah. That's the first thing. Get the right people to do the job. Deal with the old power stations. Deal exactly the same way. Identify key issues. Because we know what is currently happening. But importantly for South Africa, they want to see results. As you do those two things, people should be arrested. And we have identified 13 companies that we think they should pay us back. But we are not a law enforcing agency. Yeah. That should be done by law enforcing agencies. And we have done our research and we've put it on the table. Yeah. 500, nearly, well, nearly half a, half a trillion rand in debt. How do you stand in that regard? How do you stand with regards to um, whether it be pushing it to the side, giving it off to government? What's the plan with regards to it? One thing, once we have that kind of a debt, it becomes a balance issue issue. So in other words, ASCOM can increase its revenue by 20, 30% or so. 
it is incapable of dealing with the balance issue. We have made a commitment to government and said we're going to reduce our cost by 20% mm. over the next three years. And in fact, we have taken certain decisions over the past uh, 12 months since we've been there of reducing the cost. CapEx has been reduced from average of, of 55% to 45%. That saves us 10 billion. Operating expenditure has been reduced from an increase of 11% yeah. to a low of 4.5%. But that is not sufficient. And the tariffs that we, go, we got from NASA are not helpful. Mm. We are currently discussing and having negotiations with government because the recapitalization that we received of uh, 20, 23 billion over the next three years is still not sufficient. Yeah. It is those discussions that will come up with a proper solution. So are you saying then, because you didn't get sufficient money from the, 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 the changes with regards to the tariffs from yeah. NERSA, yeah. Um, and obviously the recapitalization amount mm -hmm. at present is currently not enough, mm -hmm. you may even be asking for more money very soon because you haven't, you, you, you'll struggle to sort of bridge that gap. Those are the discussions uh, that we are already holding with the government. The truth of the matter is if we want to make sure or we optimize our balance sheet, we will need some form of recapitalization. Yeah. And these are discussions that are ongoing because everyone sees the situation we're in is a challenge. Is let, me a give figure? You, let me give you a figure. And let me give you the numbers that will make South Africans have a clear understanding of the challenges ESCOM is, is facing. ESCOM, you know, makes, it generates about 180 billion revenue. Okay. That looks huge. Yeah. And the total cost is about 140 billion. So that gives is you... That to just run the power station? Yeah, and, and everything, deliver, everything, yeah. total costs and total revenue. Yeah. That gives you 40 billion or so net revenue. However, those are earnings. Uh, that's EBITDA, earnings before uh, the debt and tax. Yeah. The debt and tax demands about 50 billion or so. So we are borrowing money to service the debt. Hence the importance of dealing with the balance sheet, and that's what we are talking to government. Because to the extent that we are in incapable and we are not going to be able to generate enough earnings that will be able mm. to allow us to service debt from our own operations, it means that the debt will continue to be a challenge. That is what we are trying to do. You're splitting into three. Mm. How's, that, how's the plans going along for that? You know, the split into three, how the market has interpreted it, it creates the impression that that's the only solution. Splitting ESCOM now into three will not help the situation. But there are three important things that have to be done. Those are the initiatives that ESCOM has endorsed and it has presented to the government. The first thing is we need to reduce our own cost. And we are targeting 20 billion over the next three years over and above the fact that we have reduced the CAPEX and OPEX. Mm. That's the first thing. Mm. The second thing is revenue. We were expecting revenue at least of 15%, 12%, 12% over the next three years. We didn't get that. Yes. That has left a hole of about 150 billion. That's the second thing. Over three years? Yeah. Okay. 150 billion. The third thing is government intervention. We're expecting about 100 billion over the next three years. Uh, at 23 billion, you're getting 69 billion. So we have that gap. So what we're doing now is to negotiate and talk with government to see how we can deal with that issue because it is not just an income statement that yeah. we are facing and operational issues, but we are also facing the balance sheet issues, which are a major challenge. If you were to be ambitious, when would you say ESCOM could be self-sufficient? I think based on the negotiations and discussions that we have with the government, assuming that we do agree, we arrive at a, sure. a set plan, yeah. that in three to four years' time, ESCOM will be sustainable. Ambitious. I'll hold you to a conference. You'll sit right in that chair and you'll have to answer to that one again. Three to four years' time, I think the situation will be better. But that is on the financial side. Yeah. On the operational side, having put aside $49 billion for all power stations and additional, remember, over and above the budget, yeah. another $9 billion on new power stations, we think that over the next 12 months we will be in a better position. But to solve all these problems, all power stations and everything, sure. will take us almost about two years or so. Mr. Khadebe, I appreciate your time this afternoon. Really, really thank you for that. Uh, we're going to dissect everything you've said. Our next guests have certainly been listening to that. But mm -hmm. thank you so much. That is the CEO of ESCOM, Pagamani Pagam, Pagam Khadebe.